Hi and welcome to a couple of short videos about Greek pronunciation. The first video is an orientation, the second one is more technical. So in this first one we will not go through proper pronunciation but more the history, how it developed. Why would you want to pronounce Greek? Well, even if you only want to translate the words you need to have some kind of pronunciation. Then if you want to read it aloud or listen to, you should agree on a pronunciation. Maybe you want to think or pray in Greek. Or maybe you want to communicate and converse with modern Greeks, then you need to use modern Greek. The Greek language has had uh, quite a development. Pronunciation has changed a bit. We have the ancient Greek, then we have the Koine Greek and the modern Greek. In addition to that, we have an Erasmian Greek that I will talk more about in a second. It's a more academic pronunciation that was never actually used by the Greeks, but it's used all over the world today. Erasmus raised the question, how was classical Greek properly pronounced? That surprised me a bit that he didn't want to know how Koine Greek was pronounced, because he was a, not only a philosopher, but, but he was also a Christian scholar. His arguments were based on philological knowledge that was available at his time, and since then we have learned more. One of his assumptions was that different letters must have stood for different sounds, and the same letters for the same sounds. And that sounds logical but it's uh, it's not true just think of, of the letter o in english in goat you have the o sound in thought you have the o sound choice you have a cho uh, o sound foot you have a u sound and in goose you have a u sound a different one so we have four or five different sounds just for one vowel still the erasmian pronunciation is used all over the world because that's what you most of, uh, people learn at school and of course if your professor is teaching you that then you should use it at least in class. It was a bit strange because the Erasmian pronunciation used some phonemes from the ancient Greek but some of them he has taken from later times that still are used in modern Greek. Still it's used in most schools. If we look at English and other languages we might not have the corresponding sounds as they had in ancient Greek. For instance, the pitch, we don't use that much to differentiate words in English, but if you learn Japanese, you have to learn how to handle pitch because one spelling with the same phonemes can mean two or three different things in Japanese, depending on what pitch you are using. Aspiration is another thing that is not very common in English, but it was used in ancient Greek. We see a development in the language from ancient to modern, and in the middle we have Koine Greek, and there's a YouTube that I like a lot that explains some of the changes. You can read more at koinegreek.com. They have found lots of spelling mistakes during the centuries and in different places. So we know how the pronunciation actually changed. Epsilon Yota, for instance, was no longer pronounced A, but E. So in that way, we see by spelling mistakes, uh, when someone read up a document and they, they wrote it down, that the pronunciation was the same. And we have lots of examples of, of that. So with some certainty, you can say in what century it changed or when it had changed, at least. There are different Greek periods. In ancient Greek, they had different dialects also. You have the old Ionic used by Homer, for instance, the new Ionic used by Hippocrates. You have the Attic Greek, which could be seen as an offshoot of Ionic, and that was used by Plato and Sophocles and most other writers. Then you have the Koine Greek from 300 BC to 380, and you have the Byzantine Greek until the fall of Constantinople to the Turks in AD 1453. And then you have modern Greek. It has not changed very much for a thousand years. They tried to get a purified Greek, combining ancient Greek and the uh, Greek of the time, they called Katharevusa, that is not used very much today. Uh, since 1976, the official is the Demotic, the Demotiki, and that's the language of the people, simply. If you have a Bible software like Logos, you might have pronunciation included, so we can see the lemmas, that is the lexical forms of every word. And in this software, you have both the Erasmian, the Koine, and the modern Greek. And there you can also hear that the Koine Greek is very similar to the modern Greek. Now, is the, how do you learn Greek? Most people always recommend that you take a class, go to a school. But are there other options to classroom classes? 
Well, you can take an online class. Bill Mounts has a great one, a couple of different ones. You could get uh, two full semesters, books, videos, online course, courses, and so on. He also likes to teach the most common words, because if you learn the 60 most frequent words in the New Testament, you will be able to read about 60% of the New Testament, even though you only learned a fraction of the total number of words. He also has other sites, biblicaltraining.org, which has free training, a different level though. He also has a vocabulary drilling program that is quite fun to use. If we think about why did the New Testament writers write in Greek? It's because of this guy, Alexander the Great. He was a prince, became king at age 20, now Macedon. Ten years later, when he was 30, he had the largest empire of the ancient world from Greece to uh, India. And he was undefeated in battle and he was actually tutored by Aristotle until he was a teenager. If we look at the modern map, we can see it goes all the way from Greece, Turkey, Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan, all the way to India, his great empire. Some centuries later, they spoke Greek all over because he promoted the Greek life and the Greek language. So all over the Mediterranean, they spoke Greek, at least as a second language. And that was the Koine Greek, which is largely based on Attic. Last slide, we're back to the good, the bad and the ugly. Which one is good, bad and ugly is up to you. You have the ancient Greek, which we with some certainty know how it was pronounced. The modern Greek, which we know how it's pronounced. Some of the letters are a bit more advanced to pronounce than in the ancient. You have the Koine, where things changed. We're not sure always in which, what century, which letter was pronounced in which way. Then you have the Erasmian pronunciation system, which is more or less fixed, uh, which is used in schools all, all over. So there are different choices and it's up to you. This is the end of the first part.